Welcome back, everyone, to Two Frat Boys, uh, to our podcast. We have a very special treat today. We have one of the founding fathers of iCaramba.com, uh, which was the basically was the um, parent company or the media company that bought us out in 2002, which we discussed in our last episode. So, Alan Suarez, thank you for joining us. Thank you guys for asking me to join, man. I'm very proud to be here. It's good to see you guys. Last time I saw you guys was in New York City. I think it's like a couple of years ago, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. We got together at Grand Central Station. That's right. Yeah, it's yeah. always good to see the, the LUL brothers. Thank you. And, uh, Thank you, you know, it's always good to, you know, have Latino brothers in the house. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, again, uh, we're very happy to have Alan. Alan, Alan Suarez was a behind-the-scenes uh, graphic design business genius behind the actual media company, which was called, so you, Al, correct me if I'm wrong, the name, the initial name was iCaramba.com. Yeah, which, so we we uh, launched as iCaramba.com. So we were basically trying to create a portal, kind of like what a Facebook is, but just specifically for Latinos. And uh, we pitched it around, like we traveled to a couple trade shows and we pitched it to see if we can get funding. We eventually got funding from SoftBank uh, Latin, Latin America. So they gave us a quarter of a million dollars. And that was like what kind of helped us launch and um, get going. But before that, you know, I was working in advertising on uh, more on the technical side on, on uh, IT side for gray at gray advertising. And the other, my other, the other founder was uh, Dave Chattel, who I went to college with at BU. He was working at a Hispanic ad agency. And uh, so, and he was, he was more on the media side, more on the account side. So Cibonet, we, Cibonet advertising. That's correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I so, interviewed, you know, what's funny. I actually interviewed with Dave Chattel at Cibonet. Oh. <laughs> he, does, he doesn't remember that. And I, I vaguely remember it too. He didn't hire me. Yeah. So, so it was a, you know, it was a good mix because, you know, I'm first generation Latino. Uh, Chattel is, is, it was not, you know, he's, uh, he was, uh, I think he was born in, in Jersey and raised, you know, more American. I know he does have some like us, uh, I think on his mom's side, some Spanish, but you know, like you, we all grew up with our parents speaking Spanish to us. Right. So, and we all communicate with our parents and, and our older siblings say, or, or just family in Spanish with our siblings, maybe we speak English and between us, we'll speak English. So that was the, the core idea was, you know, we, since we were in advertising, um, we, I would always see a, a circular that would come in every year inside advertising age magazine. It was like, it came out, I, I don't remember when it was, but it was this little magazine, kind of like what you guys had within um, Urban Latino. And it was like, this is the the Latino, you know, this is what Latinos are, are doing. This is what they're watching. This is what they're reading. And I would look at that and I would bring it, uh, literally I would bring it to Chattel's house or his apartment. I'm like, hey, look at this. <laughs> like, These guys are, are saying we're watching Univision, Telemundo. I'm like, I hate that channel. Like I never watched that. Our parents maybe watched it, right? But we're not watching these novelas. We're not listening to this radio station. We're not reading these things. Like we're doing other stuff. So that was the, the basic idea was let's launch something that speaks to the first, you know, we eventually start to call the first generation Latino, which is, you know, someone who's born here. And that was the basic idea of launching iCarama.com. And then everything else after that was just, you know, the vehicles we use or created, including what you guys had, you know, to kind of bring the audience that, you know, we wanted. We basically were educating the clients, right. like, hey, this is the proper way to reach Right. us it's not through what what every, what neil you know nielsen is saying or or advertising right. age or ad week they didn't know you know they're listening to i, I don't even know but basically this is the avenue where you can reach us you know and then latino greeks was basically you know one of those avenues it's like perfect let's yeah let's let's segue there uh, you mentioned latino greeks so tell us then i would tell everyone listening as well how did you guys how did you first uh, get introduced to latinogreeks.com which was our competitor uh as, as, as a company and uh yeah just start go start there so, so i have a vague vague uh memory of that um mm. and i think chatel can probably expound more on that but basically i mean 
when we did get funding, like we, you know, one of the first things that we had to do was, you know, create the website. And part of that was, you know, I think on, on looking, looking for uh, ways to bring in advertising. So what's the way of doing that? And I, I believe either, I don't know who found latinogreeks.com. Um, it definitely wasn't me. Like, I don't remember like, you know, go, finding that website, but um, I know it probably had to do maybe, um, I don't know if you guys remember Collegiate Circuit. Yeah. Which is based out of, uh, in California. The, the founders of Collegiate Circuit either went to school with, with Frank Valencia, who was the, the founder of latinogreeks.com. And there were other people associated with Latino Greeks. It wasn't just him. It was, yeah, other. It was uh, Juan Aguilar. Right. So, so what we did was when, and again, I'm, I'm kind of skipping over finding latinogreeks.com. But what I remember is once we did find them and say, okay, we want that, we want to bring them within our company was, okay, what's the best way of doing that? We only had, like I said, you know, the amount of money we had was not enough to actually give cash to somebody. Right. So what's, what's that? I can't hear you, Anthony. Sorry, what tell us the amount again that you got from SoftBank to we got we got uh seven hundred fifty thousand. Wow, SoftBank, yeah. And how many? How much of that went into Dave Chatel's bank account direct <sighs> deposit? Not sure. I I remember we didn't pay ourselves like you know appropriately at all. Well, if anything you, you thought you weren't paying yourselves, but I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, just kidding. Look, just I kidding. Look, I'm I kidding. didn't look at the uh, the accounting, so yes, maybe, but um. No, but you know, you guys went to the office. We ended up setting up an office. We hired like people to to create the vision of Icaramba, which included the the and those animated characters. At that time, you know, Flash was big, Flash multimedia. So we had a Flash guy. I don't know if you, remember, you guys remember Isaac Rivera, who was our Flash guy. So we did hire people, right? But Crystal part Valtteri. of it, Chris Savalchi came in afterwards. Yep. But um, so yeah, so the idea was let's you know. When we found latinogreeks.com, the way we did similar with you guys was basically how are we going to get these guys into the company without, you know, spend, you know, doling out cash that we really didn't have because we wanted to use that, that money to grow the company. That's a good point. The, so the, the aspect of not having enough money to just buy, like pay cash to a company outright, but right. you know. So like, you know, in business is always like the, the opportunity, either you get bought out for cash or you can have equity. And then sometimes you have the option, right? If you're getting bought out, you can choose. I, I rather have equity. Like, what do you want to gamble on? Like, do you want to bet on this future company and the worth of it and just take it all in stock or do a cash, you know, so that for, for those listening, if they do have a, a ventures in the future or have a venture, you know, those are, you know, have very heavily weighted options that you, you, you want to consider strongly. So like Al said, there was no option for us, for me and Jesus, as in being bought out, like, uh, for, with Latino Step. Um, Dave didn't say, I'm sorry, Al and Dave didn't say, hey, do you want us to pay you a million dollars or 900,000? Or do you want equity? Which is another word for stock, stock certificates in, the, the actual corporation. So we took equity, uh, hoping that that would pan out uh, soon. And then me and Jesus got some devastating news not too long ago that we'll get into at, in a future. Episode. <laughs> All right. So, so, uh, so yeah, so the opportunity was how to get, I'm, I'm sticking with Latino Greeks for now, how to get Frank and his partner and what, what options we're going to give to him. Right. So we said, you guys can, because they had their own jobs, or I don't remember, you know, kind of like what you were doing. You had your own job in, in uh, Georgia. But um, we basically said, hey, guys, you know, we can, we can bring you in. This is what our company is worth. And we can bring you in as, as an equity partner and invest you guys, right? So, so basically, I think it was like four, four year vesting schedule. And I think we did it for you guys as well. So basically, at year four, that's when you, your, your sh shares would completely come in. Right. So now you're total that's and that's a protection, obviously, because you don't want to, you know, bring in Latino Greeks and then, you know, you, you give everything up front and then, you know, he's like, all right, peace out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you're left with a property that you basically don't know how to run, you know, and, and you're kind of asked out. So so that was that's that was the thing that we gave to Frank and his partner. But his partner decided, you know, not to come along. I don't remember what, how that how that 
what happened with his partner, to tell you the truth. But I know Frank was definitely given that option, the vesting option, and that's what he took. And we offered you guys the same exact thing. I never, I never knew that Juan actually had the option to join. I thought that he just, I thought, I thought it was more of a cash thing. Like you wanted to just stay more liquid and not pay another salary because in theory, I don't, I don't think we paid like uh, what, uh, what was his name again? Juan Aguilar. Yeah. I don't think we paid him anything. I believe we, we gave him the same um, vesting schedule and Chattel can probably, you know, give you more information than that, but it was, it was uh, something like that. I, I doubt but, we gave cash at all. The specifics of Juan I remember were he, he had a very cushy job. Um, he was working and he wouldn't want to go to a lower salary, even though he was going to be a part of this other company. Like, I, yeah. I don't know if it was at Con Ed, it was some high cushy job that he didn't leave for. Um, and he was happy no, to I, be I think kind he of was like a silent like, partner. Sorry, like Accenture or some one, uh, one of those Accenture companies. Or... But um, but the lesson is basically like, you know, like, like you guys, you guys took a risk and said, you know, let's let's join these guys, you know, let's see what happens. And, you know, and in, in the end run for, for a couple of us, it, it, it worked out, you know, we, you know, company was sold later on and we were able to, to kind of cash out at that point if we wanted right. to or, or continue. Right. So, yeah. So, um, so yeah, I mean, it's all risk, but uh, you know, right. okay. You guys, so you guys so, decided to, to, to join us. Right. So, all right. So then, uh, okay. So specifically with Latino Greeks, that, that that's basically the most you remember in terms of making them an offer and then frank joining now frank joined us and, and frank you know frank that's frank valencia he's very like he's an that, accountant that's actually valenica person. valenica I right right his last name. so he's very straight ways you know and um and we you know we the i think that the the main thing was latinogreeks.com was a great property you know the name itself so and he had experience, I believe, in running these uh, these shows. I don't. You guys can 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 say, you know, was there was he running shows while you guys were, or you guys remember? They must have been. They were doing something. Yeah, nothing. I mean, again. So, Jesus, you wanna? Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say that they were doing a college tour. Um, well, the one hundred and one college tour, right, right? Right, the one hundred and one college tour. But it didn't include step shows until or stroll shows until they saw kind of like the popularity that we were building in that circuit. So then they yeah. started to incorporate these exhibitions within the one hundred and one right. college tour. So it wasn't anything formal. It was more like that. I remember. So the one hundred and one college tour, obviously, yes. And and uh, the U.S. Army was our was our biggest client. I thought the I thought the one hundred and one college tour was predicated on you al and dave like right didn't you guys like kind of tell no, them to do the tour no the one-on-one tour was was a, a and and uh, you know like a property or, or an event that we just created no no you guys but not 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 like you know greeks no i don't remember that's not something that they brought with them right you got you and dave yeah. at Caramba started the one-on-one college tour and then incorporated the latino greek events right within your yeah. tour because you had to with the sponsorship dollars that you were getting from the army you had to produce you know something yeah we had to produce right. something. You, had, you had to prove that you were spending yeah. their money so those, those shows i remember those shows were obviously not successful but that why was, why like, were they not successful because one of the main things was you guys had had uh had smartly like signed up these step teams like like they were like uh you know huh. like like Contract. major league teams, you know? So like, if we were going to try and get uh, one of those teams, they're like, sorry, we have a contract with Latino set. Like we, we were like, what? <laughs> like, I, how do you I'm sure Dave, contract? I'm sure Dave was like, he was like, yeah. So the, I don't know if you remember, Chattel's nose would flare. Like, when, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So like, it was probably one of those notes. He would be like, help me understand, uh, Mr. Step team, step, step sorority girl. Uh, what do you mean you have a contract with this with yeah, these clowns? So, so obviously you had contracts with the teams that actually brought people to the shows and also probably the, the teams that were very good, right? That that of course watch them. The best ones, yeah. Exactly. So the, whoever's idea was to sign teams, like that was one of the main I remember that was one of the main things that was like our, that that like disturbed us, you know? So disturbed you our, in what way? And be, be, what do you mean Latino, by disturbed? What do you mean by disturbed? Define the, the Latino Greeks shows were not, you know, they were not good. You know, they were they were not properly attended. 
And that made us look bad with the client. So, I mean, we had to fix that. So there you go. I love it. I yeah. love it. I love it. So, you, have, you know, you have someone like Frank Valencia who has like not a creative bone in his body running <laughs> those shows. It's like not good. Oh man. I, I hate, I hate to, I, I hate to give, get pleasure out of, you know, you know, uh, people's demise or, or failures, but that does warm my heart to hear this, this back, you know, the, the backstory to this and yeah, Al, we, so Tony Martinez, with all due respect and proper, put respect on that man's name, is the mastermind. He remember you remember Tony Martinez? He was the uh, wait, what was it, Jesus? The uh, Latin Flavors. Uh, La CEO. Latin Flavor dot com that was funded by UBO dot net. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, he. That's was, when they were just doling out money. I mean, those guys probably got millions of dollars, and that they just they tanked. We got seven fifty, and we brought, we took it for we had it going for quite a while. And remember, we we were competing also with Icaramba. We were competing with Mijente, right? So Mijente was 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 uh, th one of three. Blackplanet.com and and Asian Avenue was another one. Mijente were, was the bomb, bro. When that yeah, came it was out, a, it was a good. It had a good functionality. We would use it at the office. Yeah, we were like, you know, we're like, we need to, you know. So we were. That was one of our main competitors. But again. The thing that Mijente didn't have, that didn't have all these different avenues, you know, we actually would prove to the client, you know, look, look at, look at these people, you know, this is, this is who you're going after, right? They're live here. And mm -hmm. that's, that's the thing that when we, when we got you guys on board, like those events were, were just huge. I mean, the, the Latino step shows to me, someone coming from like, I'm not, you know, I was in a fraternity, but I didn't know anything about uh, Hispanic fraternities or I knew about African-American fraternities because they were, they were on, I, I went to BU and I would see him st actually strolling down. And, and, you, and you saw School Days, the movie School Days as well. Right, something like that. So, but the shows, the Latino Step shows, when, when you would attend them, like the first time I attended that show at Lehman, I, I was blown, I was blown, it blew me away because it was like awesome. watching a, like, you know, like a Broadway show. Seriously, it's, no, like, it's very, it's very nice to hear. Thank these you. These steps, the step show, the stepping, they had like a story to it. It would, you know, the, a story was incorporated into the into the stepping, and I don't know, like you don't see stuff like that. That's that's part of your culture, like you don't. Yeah, you know, you you, you always said Al, you always said we, we got to do like a play or we got to do a, a Broadway show, literally. Or, and I was like, even yeah. even if you put it like off Broadway, I think it would kill. That's so anyone a listening that is a Broadway producer or agent <laughs> that would like to speak with us, you can please contact. And guys, just, and, and this is pre uh, that Lugar, you know, the Heights, basically, the guy who's big now. Oh, uh, not, not Lugar Heights, in the, uh, in the Heights. In What's the, the name of the, the Broadway Lynn, producer? Lynn Marin. Lynn, this Lynn is Lowe. before all his, before yeah. you, know, you guys, like I said, if, if this would have ended up in, in uh, you know, like off Broadway, I'm positive. Something like that would have been. There's, there's still a chance, Al. Don't let's <laughs> not. You know, we never know. Right. All right. So so let's let's recap. Uh, Latino Greeks is tanking horribly at these live events. We, through the con consigliere advice of Tony Martinez, put the best teams on a contract, which is. Yeah, it sounds crazy, but I mean, you got to do what you got to do, right, to to succeed. That, that was unheard of. And we were like, you know, flabbergasted because that killed any possibility of our shows being successful. That basically forced your hand to be like, we have to, we, we have Absolutely, to. Yes. It. it forced your Absolutely, hand. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. They were like, we have to buy these guys. We have or to. Or we have to at them. least meet these guys or we have to be part of, like, I think we ended up sponsoring your show, right? Or we had, we ended up, um, Icaramba sponsored the Lehman show. That first, I, I don't remember. No, it was, we, it was at Missouri in 2001 that I got, um, uh, got behind. And it wasn't like a financial thing. It was some other like in-kind contribution. Right. Were, were you at Amazura, Al, in Jamaica, Queens in 2002? Uh, I, don't, I don't think so. I don't think so. That was a great show too. But I'm glad that you were very impressed with the Lehman. Cause, uh, yeah, the Lehman, Lehman was, was the first one that I attended and, and was blown away. I went there with my my brothers and sisters actually i remember oh wow you know yeah. what now that you say that I, I think i remember you showing rolling up with your <laughs> brothers and sisters now um but uh, but yeah um 
So we, you know, we, we were- so Hold on, hold on. I'm sorry, sorry to interrupt. But I have yeah. to jump in real quick. So when, when you went to the Lehman show, you looked at Frank and it was like, Frank, you can never, ever do this. Like, what? why are you even trying to compete with these guys? Is that, is that what you told them? Frank would just be like in his normal position, like hand, you know, crossed, like- With his glasses. Looking back, like expressionless. <laughs> I mean, not, nothing against Frank. Frank was a great financial guy, you know, but I think, you know, obviously he was not you guys, you know, like, he didn't have like the, the, the connections you guys had and, you know, and I, and he was from the West coast too. So, you know, yeah. there's a difference, you know? Yeah. Me and Asus had mentioned like we, uh, in the previous episode, like we had a lot of things aligning for us. Like the fact that we were based here in the Northeast, the fact that we were in a, a moderately popular organization here in the Northeast with a team that, brought out people you know so we yeah we, we had we had a couple of things that was the other thing that amazed me was just the 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 frats how close they were like the alumni network like all that was just like you know once i i got to know you guys and and about especially lul i'm like this you know i wish bu had something like that because it's like you know i still meet to this date i meet tons of anyone that i i deal with that's hispanic and is like corporate and he's like, a, you know, like a- He's, he's a Greek, they're usually Greek. Greek. Absolutely. And when I tell them that I was involved with Latino Step and, and Icarama, they remember that. And then they, oh, wow. they go crazy. Which org do you usually meet when you're meeting these- like, I'll, I'll, I'm gonna text the guy right now and I'll, oh. and I'll let you know, yeah. But um, yeah, so, so your, the fact that you guys signed these teams was a huge factor in us saying, you know, we need to, 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 be, to meet these guys, we need to, you know, kind of just, you that's, know, watch and see how we can, you know, get you guys on board. That's, it's funny you say that because when we were talking about the contracts in the, in the prior episode, when I guess I told Jesus that I spoke with Tony and Tony mentioned that that's something we should do. Like me, you guys know my personality. Like I have a very aggressive personality. And then it was like, as soon as he said that, I was like, yes, like, and then when I told the Seuss, Seuss was like, uh, I don't know if that makes sense. The Seuss, jump in. Yeah, no, I didn't, I didn't understand, uh, or I didn't think that teams would be behind that idea. Um, but but I in my I mind, it's no. like, you, you have, no, I know you didn't say no, yeah. but you were like, oh, I don't know. And then you told me yourself, like, you were like a little hesitant, but I was like, my aggressive nature, my aggressive personality on top of, a contract it was like yeah that makes total sense and now in retrospect like i never really i had forgotten man this you know this is like 20 years ago How, however yeah 2002 do the math 20 something years ago and it's like you don't remember the details but now looking at it you know in hindsight and being mature and having more business knowledge it's like that was the best move you guys yeah had. that it's, it's like a stupid like you think it's like a silly stupid thing like who wants to put a team on a contract and why would a team want to be on a contract but it's like, we did it. We were able to do it. We were able, and it's all about convincing people. It's all about showing the teams, the organizations, how they would benefit from right. joining us. The and, same way you, Alan, showed me and Asus the benefit of joining your, and I saw the benefit of it. No, you didn't. You need to talk about eventually, that. But eventually, I'm saying, yes, eventually, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, it, but um, you know, the... I remember us contacting one team. I don't know who it was. It wasn't me. It was definitely Frank or Chattel. And, and we were, you know, they said, sorry, we can't, we can't, we can't perform because we have a contract. I mean, it was crazy. Great. Yeah, man. I mean, luckily for me and Asus is that uh, we had nothing. We, we were young. We had nothing else to do. We had no children, no wives. It's like we had nothing else to do but this. But, yeah. but call the teams every day, like, hey, you're, you're not going to be in these other shows, right? You're not, hey, there's a show coming up. You're, you're, you're not in it, right? You're like, no? Okay, <laughs> so that was, I mean, that was smart, man. And I mean, that totally, whoever's out there listening to this, if you have an idea like that or whatever, and, you, and, and it includes other people that participate, do what these guys did, you know, put them on, put the contract together, scare them not to do, a, you know, because obviously yeah. you guys had a, a non-compete or something. And that, that went into effect and that helped. 